Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at the all new 2021 and a half Salem 34 MBS travel trailer. This is a mid bunk two bedroom trailer. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside of the RV, the outside of the RV, and then we'll close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now up inside the new Salem 34 MBS trailer here. We're going to spend through the living room, kitchen area, and then we'll head to the bedrooms. Starting up first here, this one has the freestanding dinette with four chairs. Now, those chairs are storage chairs, so they actually have a lift-up seat with a, about an inch and a half or two inches of depth there, so you could hide a few things underneath of there. You have nice big windows overlooking your campsite area there. And those windows do have pull down roller shades on them. Your sofa here is basically a jackknife sofa, which will flip down into a small bed. And then you have some storage. The lower part there will flip down. And there's three big totes underneath of there that you could fill up with all the goodies you need. In the back here, you have two freestanding reclining chairs. They're pushback recliners. Electric outlet back there. And also in this little end table here, um, that is a removable access panel there to get to part of your like city water and your uh, freshwater tank fill ups to kind of check them for maintenance purposes and things like that. Electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy space heater, but they look pretty cool. Uh, it's a graystone 31 inch fireplace. Just above that, you have the Furion sound bar stereo system. And then you have a nice size area here to mount you a flat screen TV, some size. Island kitchen again here, you have storage on each side, little shelf space basically. And there's two electric outlets built into the back side of that island. High rise spring faucet there. Couple decorative pendant lighting up top here. You'll have some storage space under there as well. And then you do have a double bowl sink and a little strainer thing here, a little strainer cover. Back over here, you have a pantry area with some storage below the counter area there. Traditional microwave. A little bit of storage beside the microwave there as well. And you have your Greystone hood range and light fan Greystone oven, which has the glass front light built in. Glass stove top that'll flip up and kind of act as a backsplash. The window behind the stove area there does open as well. And then over here you have your Everchill 12 volt refrigerator. And basically that's a 10.7 cubic foot fridge, works off of battery power. Up top there is the Coleman air conditioner, which you can open it up and let it blow out right here, or you can close the vents and allow it to blow through the round ducts through the ceiling. You can also see a little bit of decorative uh, lighting there above the slides, kind of running down the tops right there. Uh, they got a little LED light strips built in there as well. Now going on up this direction, you have your propane leak detector down below here. Light switch, slide in and out button, and awning in and out button. Then you also have your air conditioner and furnace controls here. And then you are pre-wired for a King Connect system. Uh, there's an electric outlet here as well, in case you do decide you want to put some sort of internet router system and antenna thing on the top. 
In here, you have your little mid bunk kids room. So the top bunk will actually flip up out of the way to give you a little more headroom during the day if you're sitting in here playing games or something on a rainy day. The bottom bunk will also flip down into a little bit larger bed as well. Electric box with the breakers and fuses down here. There's some storage underneath of that sofa as well. USB charger ports over there. Light switch here and electric outlet down there as well. Again, the window up there does open. Also have the ducted air vent here. And over here, you can kind of see this. There's TV antenna hookups and stuff up here. And a little bit of shelf space and storage space down here. And then you have a big sliding door that will actually close off this bedroom area here for privacy. Going on up this way, we'll pop up a few pictures of this so this will be a little easier to see. But this is basically your bathroom area. So you got your little toilet area here. You have heat and air both in this bathroom. Uh, basically a step-in shower. Does have a little pull-across curtain section there. Skylight up above. We have the little fan area here. Now, there is a little bit of storage here on the left. Squeeze in here. So again, some storage down below. You can probably see it a little better in the picture. Medicine cabinet area here. And some storage on the left. A window in the hallway area there does open. into the master bedroom area here. So you have a hanging closet on each side. You have your cabinet space up at top there as well. Now the bed will flip up and you have some little cubby storage, a little area where you could kind of kick your shoes under. And then you could also actually get to the outside storage compartment there if you wanted to. USB charger ports on each side of the bed. Window on each side of the bed, and again, those do open as well. TV hookups up here, if you wanted to mount a TV on the wall here. And then you do have another closet over there, which does have a light in it too. But there's room, so you could come in here and kind of maneuver around. Again, guys, don't forget to check out CouchesRVNation.com. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country, guys, and will definitely save you a lot of money if you're interested. And also, there is your main little control panel, monitor panel, uh, a couple slide buttons. You also have your light, couple light switches, water heater on gas switch. The electric switch is outside in the lower left corner of the water heater. Water pump, battery condition, fresh black, gray, and galley tank meter as well. And also in the closet on each side of the bed are electric outlets as well. I think I forgot to mention that. All right, we are going to head outside. I want to show you around the outside real quick. Then we're going to come back in and close it up. We'll show you what it looks like closed as well. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the new Salem 34 MBS trailer here. We're going to start on the door side, kind of work our way around. So first thing up, we have the power on him. has a built-in LED light strip there against the side of the camper. Arms are adjustable and tiltable for water runoff. And it also has a manual override in the front head of the arm up here. You have a large storage compartment up front here. There's a light inside of there. The baggage door is held up by a magnetic holder instead of a plastic clip. Down here on the corner, it is pre-prepped for a portable solar panel. 
Also, the unit has the heavy-duty scissor jacks with the JT strong arm uh, attachment to it. So it is a little more stable than a traditional scissor jack or even some of the power jacks that are offered. You have two outdoor speakers here. There's also an electric outlet and TV outlet here as well if you wanted to plug in a TV outside. Large folding entry handle here next to the entry door to help you get in and out of the RV. Also, your model number will be located right there as well. You have the more ride step above step here, which basically flips up into the doorway, but it comes down, touches the ground, has adjustable feet on it, and basically it's rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step is only rated for 300 pounds. You have a second power awning on this one as well, and this again has the adjustable arms, also has the manual override, however it does not have the LED light strip built into it. The unit is a double axle unit, has four wheel electric brakes, and they are drum brakes. Going on around to the back side here, you have a traditional four inch square tube bumper. It's where a lot of people store their dump hose. You have your spare tire with the tire cover back here as well. It's pre-wired for an observation camera to go on the back. They pre-wire it for the Furion observation camera. Your city water inlet and your fresh water tank inlet are right back here below the decal there. Nice arch to the roof, just to kind of help with water runoff and stuff. It does have a full walk on roof, so you could get up there, kind of walk around when you're doing your maintenance. Very important, guys, to make sure you do get on the roof, check your seams and seals and stuff like that. Uh, so very, very important to do that from time to time. Cable inlet right back here on this corner. And you can kind of see this a little bit better, these JT strong arm bars here. Also, your freshwater tank drain is down there, and you can kind of see your enclosed underbelly as well. Over here on the side, you have your stove exhaust out. Now there are two dumps on the unit here. So you have your gray and black for the bathroom up there, and then you have your galley tank back here for the kitchen area. So there are two separate dumps located right here. Black tank flush is also located right here to clean out the toilet tank. And up here in this corner, you have your furnace exhaust out right here, and you have your six gallon gas and electric water heater. Now on the front corner right here is gonna be some data stickers, very important stickers to know about. Uh, it has your production date, VIN number on this first one, along with the gross vehicle weight sticker, basically telling you the most you can load the RV up to and pull it around. Next sticker is going to be your dry weight sticker. That's what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Next sticker is going to be your cargo carrying capacity sticker. That's the most gear you can basically put into it before you exceed that gross weight. And next is going to be your tire sticker. Just basically kind of telling you your tire size, but most importantly, tire pressure. Make sure you check your tire pressure so that they are able to hold the right amount of weight and stuff on the RV. If you let them drop too low, they can't hold the weight properly and can blow out easier. You have two 30-pound bottles. Now, 20-pounders are standard. Most of our customers seem to want to go to 30s, but a lot of dealers only stock it with 20s, so that would be a difference possibly as you're out shopping around. Two and five sixteenths hitch ball on the front. You have heavy duty safety chains, seven way Bargman plug for your lighting and your uh, braking stuff. 
power tongue jack, built-in LED light, manual override. There is a battery disconnect up here as well. And you'll also have one or two batteries if you wanted to purchase a second one. But it will come with at least one from Couch's RV Nation. It comes with zero from the RV manufacturer. Uh, so at least make sure you get one, whoever you're buying from. Nice rounded front as well. Now this customer chose to go with the Blue Ox Sway Pro hitch system. So that is these brackets you see on here and this big headpiece down here. And then there's some bars and stuff in the box that they have to put on. Um, very nice system to have guys. Uh, if you're going to be towing around the RV a lot, I would definitely recommend some sort of weight distribution sway control system for any RV. Um, but the Blue Ox Sway Pro is one of the most popular ones on the market right now. All right, guys, we're going to run back inside. I want to show you what's going on inside when we close this thing up. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we are now back inside the RV here, and I just want to kind of show you how this all kind of closes up. Um, so first thing you want to do is make sure that the chairs are going to be back past the edge here so you don't accidentally bump into your chairs. That's very important. Also, make sure that there's nothing on the floor, rocks, pebbles, screws, whatever, because the slide will run it over, and basically it could really risk ripping the floor if you're not careful. So make sure your floor is clean. So you're gonna have the button here for one of your slides. We're gonna bring this slide in. That's basically our kitchen slide moving in here. And it's gonna come in real close to the island here and stop. You might hear a little bit of a loud ratchety sound when it does. Okay. So you can see when that is in, it gets real close to the island here. So you're not really squeezing through there when that is closed. Now, this slide on the left is actually going to be the slide button that was back here by the bedroom. And we are going to hit that button to bring this in. Now, when this comes in, you can see that floor tilted upward a little bit because that is a flush floor slide and it drops down into the subfloor a little bit. Now, again, when this comes in, it's going to come in right close to the island, but it also blocks your walkway. So you're not going to be able to get back into that area. So you could, if you're stopping at a rest area, come in and get to your bathroom. You can get to your bedroom. So you can kind of get to all this area up here in the front half of the RV, but you are not getting to the back half. So you will have to make sure that you have room to open it up if you need to get back there. And you can stop, you know, basically halfway out or whatever. You don't have to go all the way out if you're just trying to like load it at a grocery store or something. If you're, you know, stopping at a rest area and just want to grab a quick sandwich or something to drink out of the fridge, you know, bump it out a foot or two, you know, just to kind of get yourself some room to squeeze by it. Now, when it is not all the way out, though, you do not want to kind of play around and jump around on the floor of the slide because you could hurt something. Uh, but real quick and easy to kind of run them in and out. Again, guys, thank you for taking the time to check out my video. I hope that got you a good idea on the new Salem. Thanks again, guys, for checking out my videos.